Hey you guys, it's Bird tonight. We're here to react to a couple of different things. I want to share some updates from Ruby and Kevin Frankie's adult son Chad and how he is feeling current day. I've mentioned him in previous videos, kind of, you know, initially he was very quiet, which is understandable. He is sharing a little bit more of how he feels through social media. So I wanted to share that. And then we're also going to talk about some of the jailhouse phone calls that have been released to the public between Ruby Frankie and her sister and Ruby Frankie and her now former husband, Kevin. It is um, quite interesting, but we're going to go through it all. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so let's start out with Chad. He has been sharing things on social media, as I mentioned, and the, the first thing I wanna share with you is he put on Instagram, someone sent me this edit. Usually I hate them, but this one I really appreciate with the sad emoji. Favorite song too, haha. And the video is um, Coldplay Yellow. And it shares a compilation of just different clips of Ruby and her kids and Ruby's mugshot and some of the news headlines that have um, been published since she was arrested. Watching this video absolutely sent me into tears. And of course I will link it down below, but it is just to think about the things that the oldest kids witnessed and went through themselves in the Frankie household, I can't imagine. I, I just can't imagine, and I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine the path of healing that they're going to have to go through for the rest of their lives because of things that they either went through themselves and or witnessed. And, you know, witnessing abuse is not that doesn't necessarily make it an easier path to heal. You witnessed terrible traumatic things being done to your younger, younger siblings, and that's not easy. So I will say what I've always said. I hope that he has a team around him. I know that his girlfriend, he has shown some little clips and photos of her, and it seems like he's in a very happy, healthy relationship from the perspective of social media, which as we know is not always 100% um, truthful, it seems like he is doing okay current day. The other thing was shared by Sherry, which is their, also, their other adult child, and she said she shared Chad's video where he showed somebody outside of their house, um, you know, most likely wanting a story, a statement, a photo, a video, whatever. And she said, crazy how the news gives my family crap for exploiting the kids and then makes money off of exploiting my family. Shame on you. And I've always said this. You don't go real life. You don't like. I don't, I don't care if that's what you do is report the news as a personality on social media. You don't need to go to someone's house. You don't need to go park outside by their driveway and wait for them to come outside so that you can get a photo or, or a video of what they're up to. That is so truly bizarre to me. And I want to make it very clear in this video. I said in prior videos that I would not be showing injuries of the children because I didn't think that they should have been released to the public. Shame on any YouTuber or gossip tea commentary channel that showed those injuries. Any one of them. One that I know of is the Dad Challenge podcast. I know, haven't talked about him in a while. I try to avoid it all, at all costs, but I received several messages sharing concern, sharing frustration. And it is frustrating because I don't care if the video is monetized, not monetized, if it's for members only, if it's for whatever. You are being a Natasha Cooper if you are putting literal images of abuse on any platform that you manage the content for. Shame on you. Sherry went ahead and also shared some of the screen grabs of emails that she has received for interview requests. Like, here's the thing, like, 
if if the adult kids want to give an interview, I'm pretty sure that they know the steps to take of how to contact these tabloids, news channels, news websites. I'm pretty sure that they can take that and do what they need to do if they want to talk. For any media outlet to be contacting these adult kids when they are actively trying to heal their own trauma and also be there for their, their younger siblings is simply frustrating, but honestly, I'm not very surprised. And oddly enough, echoing what I was just saying, Sherry also said, to every reporter and media journalist, leave me the hell alone. I am not talking to anybody. I can speak for myself when I am ready and you do not need to do it for me. Again, leave me the hell alone. I really hope that somebody received this message when she shared it because she's making herself very well known and it, it should not be something that is solicited. I understand that the Ruby Frankie story and Jody Hildebrand's story is a very interesting topic, especially to those of us who knew of eight passengers long before Ruby, uh, Ruby was arrested. However, um, at the same time, there is that kind of line in the sand that a lot of people don't know how to stand behind the line and respond to things as they come out without overstepping the bounds and without further hurting the children. Now I want to get into these jailhouse phone calls between Ruby and Kevin and Ruby and her sister. So let's start out with the conversations between Ruby and Kevin. This is wild. She paints Jody as this poor innocent lady who is just being having her reputation tarnished and I think that's interesting too because during the second interview of Kevin, he also shared how Ruby had previously mentioned long before the arrest even happened, she was worried about Jody's reputation. And still here, she is literally sitting in jail talking about poor Jody, poor Jody's reputation, blah, 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 blah. Y'all were raising children. As if she needs a reminder, but it's like she she is just so far out there. Um, maybe there's just no speaking common sense to somebody like Ruby at this point. But let's start there. I think there are three parts, so let's start with part one. Well, you called. You had to put her in a in a chair, and it was it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming and, and the banging and people. It's like okay, that's that's you know upsetting. But the most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. That is the most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me. They misinterpret me. And, and play. No, people understand you. They understand you as a child. Sir. And people in prison or jail, um, no matter what organization or department you're in current day, uh, people do not like those who abuse, mistreat, harm, or schmurder children, okay? Very simply put, everybody knows that. Jody, they, they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous. And horrendous. You know, puts her neck out on the line for people. Come again? Are, are you serious right now? Are we seriously talking about the Jody Hildebrand that was literally abusing children using cayenne pepper and honey on open wounds that were caused by handcuffs that she and Jody put on children covered with duct tape and saran wrap and all of the things we know all about that. Um, putting her neck out. In fact, Jody would be the last person I would think that would ever put her neck out for anybody but herself. You know what? Every Joseph Smith, every every wonderful man of God has had to be misunderstood. That's right. And so I'm going to get out of this. Who knows? I, maybe, maybe in 10 days I'll get out of this. If I'm, you know, if the if truth prevails right now or, you know, who knows, like 20 years? I, I don't know. I don't know how long. But I'm going to step out. I'm going to say I went through everything I have seen. God's children suffer. All the people here, my jail cellmates, have been beautiful women, but they've been hurt. You know, they've been 
deceived into drugs and <laughs> my heart. The truth has prevailed. Ruby Frankie is her children. What is this comparing herself to people of God and Joseph Smith? I don't know any, you know, big details about that whole um, Mormonism thing because I've not been a part of it. I would never be. But what I can say is that if anybody looked at what Ruby and Jody did and thought of it as justifiable, normal, not abusive, like those people should be put under the jail with Ruby and Jody. It is weird behavior. She left her kids with scars that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. She actually thought that she was going to get away with this. And that's why I think it's so important that the sentencing is the book being thrown at both of them. Because she still thinks of herself as somebody who is outside of this situation as if she didn't cause all of it herself. Um, and and I, I'm very concerned about the sentencing and what the final sentence ends up being and whether or not she might be released early. Jody and Ruby both need to be put away for a very, 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 very long time. And even then, I don't know if it will help who they are when they are eventually released. But my God, if they serve some, you know, four or five year sentence, that is going to be very, very bad. And it's going to set a really bad example for other people who abuse their children. It should be well known that if you abuse your children, then you are going to go to prison for the longest period of time that we are able to send you there. I just have so much compassion for them. And I, mm. I have compassion for the cause and I have compassion for myself. And I, and I had to be told that I'm suicidal. Where was the compassion for your children while you were abusing and starving them? Where was that compassion? Because I would think, okay, if I have a, if I have a cup of compassion here, the people that are going to get that compassion first are going to be the people that count on me for their safety, well-being, and all of the good things because I am their parent. So what on earth are you talking about? You have, uh, you're, you're talking about children of God and all of this kind of stuff. She is so far gone. A lot of this stuff, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because it is just so far out there. Like, how can you reconcile crazy? I don't, I'm like, no, no, that's not true. Anyway, um, if you need to Sherry, let me... That was either Sherry or one of your siblings. Well, they're all in cahoots. One means all of them, but yes, you're right. The siblings and Sherry, which is her daughter, are all in cahoots. What is cahoots to Ruby? Because cahoots, even though she's labeling it as cahoots, which is stupid, it sounds to me like they are tr believing the evidence and the facts that have come out regarding this and they are choosing to stand with the children which is the right decision to make sherry tried to stop this long before ruby was actually arrested she was deeply concerned for her siblings um and nothing was done about it this is the thing like if if you're getting a phone call from a family member that children are being abused and there is a cause for concern there that's not the time or the place to just put a pamphlet on the door and say that you did a visit. Because if that's the way that things are going to go, we're going to see more Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrands, and it is going to be detrimental for the children that are not saved in time. In your hearing, I don't know if you've considered this, I don't know if it'd be helpful, but you can have the house. <clears throat> and, if, well. and if all the kids go to the house, you've got room there, and I, I will... I will gladly stay away and, and let you guys be. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'm just giving it to you if it is. Thank you. And in the discussions with, with my attorney, that, that's the only way. Why is Kevin so calm?
That's what I want to know. Here's the thing. At this point, he has fully allowed it to register that Ruby caused physical harm to his children who barely made it out alive. They were literally days away from death. And now that has all registered and Kevin is still awkwardly calm considering that Ruby and Jody did this to his children. So in his interrogation, when he wants to slam down on the desk and do all that kind of stuff, why is that aggression not being sent to Ruby now that things have actually registered as to what the hell is going on? Now, once has Ruby said, how are my kids? Are my kids okay? Are they alive? Are they healing? Are they well? Are they bad? Are they sad? Like nothing. Neither of these people are worried about the kids. And it really is just mind boggling. That we're going to retain custody of the children. That's fine. There he's, he is 35 years in this, and he said, even if you are acquitted and um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under 18 children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the spirit said, your children. She's still talking about the God and the spirits and the uh, whatever she has going on up here. It is so weird. Like, Ruby, come out of Deluluville. Let's come back to Earth and recognize that you have your children. You almost killed your children. And you are not able to access your children. But as a side note, you're going to go to prison for a very long time. And I hope that it is the maximum, um, the maximum sentence because you are truly a monster who needs to be put away, actually needs to be put under the prison. We're going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. And she wasn't done and she wasn't ready because in my opinion, she was going to take those kids to Arizona when her and Jody were eventually going to buy that ranch. And I think that those children were going to become sacrifices. I've said that before. I will say it again. Um, I, I don't think that things would have ended until those children were um, no longer in the equation. And she and Jody would have justified it and said that it had to happen and God told them this and God told them that and the spirits and the demons and whatever. Um, and I'm so glad that they were saved when they were. Mm. Satan has taken everything oh, away from me that I love. And I'm a good woman. I don't do naughty things. This isn't a Satan thing. If this is a Satan thing, then Ruby is the Satan thing in this equation. Her, she and her, um, you know, sidekick Jody. I find it to be very interesting how calm Kevin is. Still, we're on part three, which is the final part in this little uh, chunk that was uploaded. He is so calm. And this is the same guy who, like I said, wanted to act all irate and upset in his interrogation with the police and slam his fist down and talk about it. he has a picture of his family on the wall and blah, blah, blah. Like, and also wanted to press charges against Sherry for burglary. I covered that as well. Check the Eight Passengers playlist in case y'all are, um, you know, in, in case y'all miss that. But... This is really, really wild to me. Just how fucking crazy these people are. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. Here's the thing. She goes into this whole, I'm a good girl. I don't do naughty things. I feel very weird with her saying, I'm a good woman. I'm a good girl. I don't do naughty things. The descriptor of naughty to me comes off as very adolescent. It comes off as trying to make herself seem much more innocent than she is because a lot of, a lot of times, and correct me if I'm wrong down below, but when I think of something being naughty, it's like you're, you're trying to correct a child. You're, you're telling your child, oh, if you're naughty, you're not going to see, see Santa Claus. Oh, don't do naughty things. Be a good girl. It, it's that, 
it's just like a completely different descriptor than what we're actually dealing with. We're dealing with a full grown adult that abused her children and almost killed them. This is not a small little girl doing something that is naughty and being reprimanded by her parents. Oh. Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can okay. to keep <sighs> truth in our family. And Thank you. I'm, I am committed to our family. I'm committed to you and our marriage, no matter what happened. Thank you. Thank you. I will be here to support you in any way that I can. Well, thank you for stepping up. This, I this... do need to go, but okay. All right. call me back when or if you need. When will you find out? How can I call you? When should I call so I find out what they say? I don't know how long this will go, but if you call this afternoon, I, I will know. This is a preliminary hearing, so there will be no... Okay. Well, it's hard to get a phone around here. I asked for a phone, and it took hours to get it, so I may, it may not be until later tonight. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. Good luck. I will be praying for you. you. Okay. Thank bye. you. Goodbye. Bye. Why the fuck is Kevin so calm? Why is Kevin so calm and saying how he's going to do everything? And blah, 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 blah. Like, hearing him so, have such a calm demeanor when he's talking to Ruby while she is literally in jail for almost killing their children is extremely enraging to me. It is. It is extremely enraging. I think it further defines his character and or lack thereof, I should say, to sit there and be so nice to the woman, whether or not she is your wife or whoever. I don't care about that. She almost killed your kids. Where is the emotion? Where is the anger? Where is the hostility? Your kids were almost carried out of Jody Hildebrand's home in a body bag. And you're sitting here, I'm going to do what I can. Please. All right, so now let's get into the phone calls between Ruby and her sister. Section will be a little longer, but let's just start at the top. So um, Ellie asked a little bit about this. Um, I wrote it out in a text um, to her, but so the next thing that will happen is I will fill out and she will fill out a probation and um, probation and there's another P um, paperwork. And basically you go through your history and you tell them your history, which there's no history on me. There, there's nothing, no criminal history, no mental health history, nothing. Um, and I'm also hiring um, a professional to do a mental health evaluation just to say she's, she's good, like there's no mental health problems at all. And then that will go to my probationary board. Jody, she can lie on her paperwork, and mm -hmm. she probably will. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Mm -hmm. um, Does she actually think that she is a sane person? Listen, sane people don't hurt children, Ruby. Sane people do not harm their own children, other people's children, um, children that they know nothing about, people that are sane and have no mental health issues. They don't harm elderly people or animals, people who harm the most vulnerable are mentally ill. So take a look in the mirror for once. And so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking, how, how repentant are you? How much responsibility are you taking? How, mm -hmm. how are you aware that what you've done is wrong? And she's not, she's the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life. She knew I would testify. Um, the other thing is, on my plea deal, when I come up for probation, the the prosecuting attorney can um, 
will often, if they think that you're a danger to society, will talk to the probationary board and, and or write them a letter saying, I think she needs to stay where she is. Um, he's going to stay neutral and not. How much responsibility are you taking? Because while I have zero respect and 100% disgust for Jody Hildebrandt, from the jump, you were their mother. You were the one that was supposed to keep these kids safe and fed and healthy and happy when you can make them happy. Like, what is wrong with you? These phone calls really just, it, it's yet another confirmation. It's like the confirmations just stack up on, you know, one after the other. Ruby is delusional in trying to place blame on anyone but herself. Calling children evil. Saying that um, children are sadistic and possessed. Disgusting. Write any letter when my probation comes up, which is a really big deal. But for her, he's, he's not going to stay neutral. So we can come up to probation and I can get off on probation and she may not. So what does probation look like? Like what does that all entail? It can look like several different things. I think I'm still learning about this and I think it's, I never realized how complicated it is. I always thought you pled oh, guilty the and they tell you how long you're in. Yeah. There's a lot of terminology to know. Yeah. Yeah. And and, you know, half of the stuff that is said goes over my head and then I have to go, you know, I come back and I ask the girls here, I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Yeah. Um, but probation could look like going home, like you could go home. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it might look like going home with, with restrictions, like you can go home, but you need to live with somebody. She actually thought that she was going to go home. She actually thought that she almost killed her kids and she was going to go home. She actually thought that she abused her kids and wrote all those journals and left all these, you know, evidence behind that she's a terrible piece of garbage. And she thought she was going to go home. Here's another question I have. Where is the anger towards Ruby? Why is this just a free flowing conversation? I don't know. To me, I can speak for myself. If I had a family member that was sitting in prison for almost killing their children, I would not be having a casual conversation with them. I can guarantee you that much. I don't care if it's family that I've known from the day that I was born. I think it was the last thing you talked to her, was it that day? Mm -hmm. It was when we were arrested. Okay. Yeah, I went, I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment, but we left at like three, in the morning and she calls me sometime in the morning and I and so I went back down but when I got to the house I mean it, it looked like it looked like the movies there was a red fire truck there was a black van with tinted windows there was there were two ambulances there were 20 cop cars I mean it was it was did you just sit in your car no, I I pulled up and found a spot to park. She lives on a cul-de-sac. I parked in the cul-de-sac, and I walked up. And the, the driveway was just full of cops, and I just walked up to the cops. And mm. they said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head, and so they took me in and put me in the casita, and I sat there for a couple hours. I just sat there. And then... Um, they were, they were finishing looking through the house and stuff, I think, and um, some of the guys were coming in and out with pizza. And so I think I think was still there because the ambulance car was there. Was eating pizza with the police. And then um, and then once once the kids were taken in the ambulance cars, then the detective came and patted me down and arrested me and then took me to the courthouse for questioning, which I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't say anything because Lamar was really helpful. Like, if you ever get arrested, don't say anything. I just didn't say anything. And she How was did like, you find Lamar? Did he, was he just assigned to you, coincidentally, or did you 
um, so she has a she has an attorney that she's used for connections, and mm-hmm. and I called him and no one answered. But then she called him, and he said, "I only do." like business law i don't do criminal law this is another part that's really enraging to me because ruby acts as if it was some kind of casual encounter for her child that was so badly emaciated to be eating pizza with the police as if it was some kind of meet and greet that was super casual so fun and just something light-hearted they brought her pizza because she was literally starving to and they were trying to coax her out of the closet that Ruby and Jody had her in. This was not something that was just, oh, well, we're here, so let's just bring pizza. This child was starving. She ate a whole pizza and a half and a milkshake because she was starving. But here's a number of two people who do that I would highly recommend. And so she gave the two numbers, and I got the number from Kevin. I don't, I don't know how the numbers got from I – I don't know how, but um, that he, Kevin said, here's your attorney, and this is her attorney. And so – and that was the last time I talked to Kevin. It was a couple of days after my arrest. But So I didn't see Jody at all when I went to the house to turn myself in. I didn't see her. Okay. And, and I went – and they took me to the courthouse, and – the detective is like, I've got all night. We can talk all night. And I didn't say anything. I just said, I, I want an attorney. So there uh, is some stuff in these conversations that just really doesn't matter. But the way that she literally talks about the pizza thing really, really bothers me. Like, why do you think that your kid ate a whole pizza and a half by themselves? Do you think it's because they were just bored and were excited to see police officers? in the house it it really really bothers me um it's just really upsetting i could hear kevin in the hallway talking and then he left and when they took me out of the room they took me outside and cuffed me and and said again they cuffed me again and then put me they told me you're under arrest for and then they told me two two of the charges and then they had me get in the in the patrol car, and that's when I saw Jody. I saw Jody was also in the patrol car, and um, she she had surgery on her shoulder. And she couldn't put her hands behind her back, so then they pulled her out and changed up the way they arrested her, so she could drive with her hands in front of her. And then we had about a 40 minute, 45 minute drive to the jail, and that was the last time I spoke to her. We were in the back. Is this Bonnie or is this Julie? I really can't tell because they sound very similar. And since it's a phone call, I don't know. Um, If that has been confirmed and you know, please put it in the comment section of this video. Me personally, I don't really care which sister it is, but it is so frustrating to sit there. And all of these videos that have been posted the entire time, Nobody on either side of the call is talking about the wellness of the kids. The sister, Kevin, Ruby, like nobody is saying like, oh my God, you know what? I am just so happy that the kids are okay. This is my time to repent. This is my time to, um, you know, do what I need to do because I was a horrible person. It's just crazy. These are not people that care about the children in this situation sang a hum, like hummed a couple hymns and she she was she was still justifying the whole time she's like don't worry don't worry we'll have our day in court and then and then when we were booked in um they put us in separate cells and we've been in separate cells ever since so mm-hmm. Do you hate talking about that kind of stuff? Does it trigger anything, or do you, or is it just? No, I don't. I I think it's. Mind? No, I don't mind talking about it. It's okay. Maybe good for me to talk about it. I don't know if you <laughs> like no, talking I mean, about it. I was just wondering if it triggered anything. In this, but if you're doing okay mentally, and then that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's. 
Um, I think the, I think putting the pieces together and just seeing, like, she knew she was lying the whole time. Like, I, it, and it's embarrassing, too, to, like, repeat it. It's like, oh, my gosh, how gullible was I? Oh, my gosh, how, how much power I gave this person, and I didn't see it. I'm getting extremely frustrated watching this and listening to her sister agree and have conversation and not... Like, how are you not screaming at Ruby on the other end of the phone? What is going on in this family? Does nobody care and nobody care to recognize, like, the gravity of this f***ing situation? These kids were almost killed. And people are on the phone with Ruby like, mm, okay, Jody's crazy. It, like, I truly don't understand it. I can't reconcile it. And I don't want to. Um... Again, like Ruby Frankie, Jody Hildebrandt, um, put them under the jail. And in my personal opinion, I think that Kevin should also be in the jail. Um, this is just such a heartbreaking situation. And like I said, you know, when I first discovered Eight Passengers, I never thought that it would end up in the situation that in it ended up in. And... It's just sad. It's sad. And I, I think about these kids and I worry about them and I worry about, you know, not only the emotional, but the physical scars that they will have from what Ruby and Jody put them through. And I hope that they are okay. I, I truly do. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this catastrophe of a video for now. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.